Hey, what's cracking, everybody? You're back with Mr. Burger. And today, we're going to hopefully, finally, get around to that main bus. So, main bus is a really cool thing. What you do is you send like multiple lanes of your your base materials and of your you know like intermediate products, essentially. So you know like circuits and copper plates and iron plates and things like that uh, down this one direction. And you have like a few like lanes of them side by side. And uh, what that allows you to do is have all the, you know, intermediate and production things just kind of on this one really long, they call it a bus, you could call it an array. It's kind of like a runway almost. It's just this long strip of belts that has everything you need on it. And then you can pull things off of it so that you can make, you know, circuits and production machines and, and, uh, what are these guys? Um, inserters and power poles and radars and practically anything and everything that you need to make. Even your science stuff gets all automated directly from that. It's a great way to start early game. So what we did here is we have this little mini factory and I just wanted to do this to kind of get a setup with, like I said last time, you know, some nanobots and some belts and stuff. And I'm gonna need a lot of those for the main bus. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna dump some of this coal by clicking on it, holding control, and then left clicking and moving over all of the uh, furnaces here. And that will allow us to then uh, drop all that coal and make a little bit more room in our inventory here. Okay, so we got that extra space there. Let's go ahead and run back down here now. Um, I have to press alt tab a lot to switch between my recording uh, software and the game. And when I press Alt, it turns off Alt mode. So if you see me without Alt mode on, that's why. What Alt mode is, is it's this thing here that shows what each production machine, each assembly machine is making and what each crate has. And it shows arrows for the inserters and things like that. So if I press Alt, you'll see it turns that all off. You usually want it, or almost always want it on, so you can see what's inside of everything. So right now, since we have that extra space, we will, well, I kind of want to make some more room with the iron plates and copper plates. We can also use them to just handcraft um, belts and things. We we only have a few inserter or splitters, so let's make a few splitters. And let's do maybe, now we can do a bunch. There we go, that's using up some of our stuff. And then a few undergroundies, and then just a few regular belts to use up some of the iron. And we can even drop some of the copper like into that right there to just free up some more space. So now we've got all that space so we can pick up like all these nanobots. Um, we can pick up all these belts here. And what you do is you just control left click and that picks up everything in the box. If you don't want to do everything, you can always just like go in and individually place stacks, right click to take half of it, um, control click to take everything from your inventory and put it in a chest or vice versa, everything of that item type and shift click will do one stack. So lots of little hotkeys like that. It's kind of uh, difficult to get the hang of at first, but eventually once you keep doing it and you keep playing, it's a really great system, quite honestly. And uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It's a, it's no wonder that this game is like the second best rated game on all of Steam because it's just so well made in so many ways. So rather than like going back and checking out the previous maps uh, or the previous videos, um, or like copying the seed or anything, we can use this zoom in, zoom out mod, the mega zoom mod to kind of zoom in really far. Um, you know, you can get in really close and see your character's feet or, you know, the inserters up close or whatever. Um, but we can also zoom way out. And you can go super far, it drops your FPS and UPS really slow, so if you don't have a good computer, beware. And you can see like further than you normally would be able to. And hopefully this doesn't mess with the recording, but it should be good. We can see like down there, we've got a big lake down there and to the top left, we've got a big lake. So quite honestly, um, however I plan to do it before, I can pretty much just start sending uh, plates and stuff down onto the main bus. And then we will be able to just get that started and uh, we'll have plenty of room to expand either way. When I make my main bus, I like expanding to the right. So I'm going south and then um, not really expanding. Actually, I expand the main bus to the left to one direction, and then I pull off of it with all the little mini factories to the right or the opposite direction. That way you have infinite room essentially to expand if you want to make your bus bigger and bigger. After a while, after a while you're probably not going to want to expand it anymore. You may want to change your layout or do a second mega bus or something like that. 
Um, but you know, there's a lot of options. So let's go ahead and start just uh, getting things basically set up here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right a little bit more, and we can oh yeah, I have nanobots, so we can do this and press tab, and it'll switch to the nanobots, and they should place everything for me. And then I can control C and copy that whole long thing and do this. And then what I'm gonna do is just bring this out a little bit further and go down here. Maybe we can go past this ore patch. I mean, we may as well get started here. We should be fine right here. Okay, let's get started here. And you can use the termite bots to get rid of some of these trees. It's a early, um, really great way to get rid of trees. So uh, that's like, people joke like, oh, that's the real enemy in Factorio, right, is the trees. Because it's so frustrating to get rid of all of them sometimes, and they're always in your way. Um, so, but either way, we uh, can get rid of them with, you know, uh, machine guns and flamethrowers, or running into them with cars and tanks, or all kinds of stuff. But if you have these termite bots, those will take care of them. Also, if you use the blue bots and you just mark the trees for deconstruction, they'll go and pick them up, and they will... Um, turn them into wood, essentially. Or that might be the regular bots, sorry. I don't think that's the banana bots, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll see. All right, so let's get this started here. Um, this will be a decent sp a spot to start it. So what you do here is uh, we want uh, to think about how many lanes of each item that we want. So if I don't have uh, something to mark it, but essentially I can drop like a, an iron plate right there by pressing Z and we can see okay that's gonna be iron right there normally I would use a constant combinator but I do not have that unlocked yet and I'll get to that in a little bit why we would use that but essentially it's just something that you use to like mark for yourself and be like oh I'm gonna put iron plates here or I'm gonna put copper plates here or whatever so right now we know that this is gonna be iron here and the next thing that you want to do is put a 4x4 four four balancer now, I have um, Nilaus's base in the book, and it's outdated, but I found a 0 0.17 version of it. And that has like a bunch of great things that we may be using for this series. Uh, but we also have a lot of other options. So let's see. He has um, the... Sorry, let me pull that one up again. He has the 4x4 main bus balancer, the uh, stock one here um, with the lowest level belts. And so we will probably use that one. Alternatively, I have this whole massive book of balancers and it's like every balancer, a one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five, so on. And then a two to two, two to three, two to four. And it just, what balancers do is they ideally give you a, an equal output on the output side of the belts and the balancer. Um, based on whatever you put in. So if you have two belts coming in, it'll equally split them between whatever amount is in the output. So to be more specific, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be using a four by four. So the standard four by four is this one right here. We can see in this blueprint it uses blue belts and splitters and we don't want that because we don't have those yet. So let's go back to Nilaus's version. This guy's another great YouTuber. Um, if you are looking for a beginner series tips or even advanced stuff, I, I recommend him as well as KOS for this game. Uh, but anyway, let's use this base one that he has here like we were talking about earlier. We're just going to put that right there. And then my nanobot should place everything for me. If you place it manually, there's a lot of different ways to try to figure out how to do it quicker. But we're not going to worry about that. Um, now, what I like doing is... Oh, first off, the reason that we do it... The reason everything is 4x4 four four on the main bus is when we have yellow belts here and yellow undergroundies. Yellow undergroundies can go as long as four units across. So we can pull stuff off of our bus and put it under uh, other you know, belts or other lanes essentially and get it all the way out on the other side of the bus. And that sounds like a lot, like a really confusing, overwhelming thing right now if you're a beginner. But trust me, once we get going more and more here, you'll have a better understanding of what I mean. So just stick with me for now and you'll be able to figure it out. So what we're gonna do is we could open up the blueprint again or we could just control C, copy that. And we're going to make sure that there's always two spaces in between each lane. So we can put one underground E uh, coming out. Oops. One underground E coming out right there. And then another one going back under and coming out there. And essentially it allows us to pull things off there. So let's get rid of those underground E's right now because we don't need them quite yet. And 
I think this, oops, sorry guys, let's go in a little bit quick there. This isn't quite finished, so let's go ahead and help finish this up. And we will be getting iron here, and you'll be able to see exactly what it does. Now, we already know we're going to put iron here, so let's go ahead and put a belt there. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to be doing is four lanes of copper. Let's make it eight lanes, actually. So we got two separate four laners of iron and then two separate four laners of copper. So it's going to be eight lanes of each. If you're just doing a very first base or if you're playing with biters on, you may want to be considering just doing like one uh, or four lanes of iron and then four lanes of copper. So like one big, um, you know, array here. I guess this is a lane and this is a the singular or belts. We'll, we'll go with that. So one lane of iron, one lane of copper, one lane of circuits, etc. One lane being four belts wide. All right. So again, guys, this may be really confusing at the very beginning, but let's uh, just bear with me and you'll see what happens here. So we can see now that although only one lane of iron is coming in. It's being equally split among these four lanes down here. And that is the whole point of a balancer, which is what this guy right here is. And then we can use our nanobots. We can control C and we can extend each of these down. because These are going to go down. And remember I said this one right here is going to be copper. The second one is also going to be iron. We're not going to fill it in yet, but we're going to leave it there for now so that we remember where it's going to be. But the third and the fourth are both going to be copper. So let's go get our copper. Let's run it down over here. And we'll pull it from right there, bring it on up there, and then just connect that. And you can see right now we are not making a whole lot of iron plates, um, but that doesn't matter at this time. Right now we're not going for a huge production. We're just kind of trying to get the main bus set up. And that's essentially our main bus. And we're going to have more and more of these little guys right here. So like the next thing would probably be, we would have one of green circuits. So you could like copy this whole thing and paste it there. Let your nanobots do the work. Um, or you may want to consider like, what are you going to make next? And will you be able to bring it directly in from the top there? So what I mean is like, we may pull some iron and copper off to the side here to make circuits, for example. And um, quite honestly, if you're gonna do circuits, first of all, I just wanna say this, if you're gonna do green circuits and you're gonna be playing this game quite a bit and a pretty big base, you really wanna consider dedicated lines of iron and copper for your circuits, which means lines that go, lines of, uh, or lanes rather, that go directly to your circuit production rather than just pulling off of your bus because you use a ton of iron and copper for circuits and you use a ton of circuits for practically everything else in the game. So for now, we're gonna pull off of our main bus and then later once we uh, have a little bit more set up, we're probably gonna switch over to uh, having direct lines of iron and copper coming. But for now what I wanna do is, I wanna extend this a little bit further. So let's bring it down further. And this too. Okay, and then let's do our First thing of green circuits here. Now, one thing that you could do is iron gear wheels. You could put that on your bus, but a lot of people don't put that on their bus. They just make them on site, which means like when you have a little factory making say belts, you just have a assembly machine that makes iron gear wheels right next to the one that makes belts and like directly inserting into it or putting onto another belt that later inserts into it rather than having a whole lane set up of iron gear wheels. You definitely don't want to put copper cable on the bus because Copper cable um, requires one copper plate, but it makes two of them. So you're gonna uh, have more and more than, basically you want the copper plates on the bus because you have less of them than if you were to put them into cable form. Because for every one copper plate, you'll have two copper cables. So you'll have twice as much. So you essentially, same thing, you make them off site. But right now let's get all of this down and then we're going to go ahead and pull a full lane of um, iron and a full lane of copper off here. Now there's two different ways you can do it. If you want to pull just like a half lane, right? You just use a splitter and then you run it out like that. But that's not what I want. I want to do a whole lane. So I'm going to pull the whole lane off there. And then we got this whole lane of iron there. And you'll see this, this um, 
the little belt now is empty. So what you do is you balance it by putting a splitter there. And essentially, see how I pulled from this first lane here? Next, I would probably want to pull from the second or third lane if I were, wasn't going to do it again by doing something like this. You would have underground ease. And then you could put this little guy like that and pull it out there. And then put your splitter there. And essentially, you continue everything. But we don't want to do that quite yet. That's just how you would do that. And then, so we can Alt-D to deconstruct all of that, that, and our nanobots will take care of it. And um, the reason I'm doing a full lane is because we're going to be doing circuits, so we're going to be using a whole lot of them. So, let's go ahead and look at some circuit options. Uh, Nilaus' circuit thing is pretty good. I like it. We could use it. Um, if we go to my blueprints, my buddy Dylan made... A green circuit thing that is pretty basic we could use that um alternatively we could go there's a different kind of green circuit thing here i'm not as familiar with this one so i probably wouldn't use that one but it's an option um kos has some good ones early game green circuit yeah see like she uses that one and that has more room for more stuff um we'll just use nilauses because it we're not planning on doing like a super massive mega base with this series. We're just kind of, I'm going to be showing you kind of how to play the game, get a base set up and launch a rocket ideally. So we will go ahead and just do this one right here. And uh, it looks big and funky and complicated right now. But trust me, it's not that bad. Okay, so we're going to, uh, a couple things here. When you, when you start building your factories off to the side, you generally want to leave some space between your bus and your factories. So let's go ahead and deconstruct these trees. And uh, we can go to about here. And let's get the green circuits. And we'll put this right about there. All right. And then our nanobots will go to town. And here's the uh, constant combinators I was talking about. And you can see the output signal on the very right of the screen there. It says one iron plate. So that tells you you're gonna need iron plates in there. And the output signal here is green circuits, which means green circuits are gonna be coming out of there. So on and so forth. So that being there, we know we need iron there. So we're going to run a belt here all the way back to where our iron was. It doesn't line up perfectly, but it really doesn't matter. We'll just connect it like that. And then our iron is going to come into there. And we can get rid of the constant combinator now because we know that iron is going to be going in there. Oh, whoops. Let's actually get all those back. Um, yeah, that that is the iron one. Okay, sorry. I thought I got the wrong one, but that's correct. So iron's going to come in there. And we need some assembling machines, so let's make a few of those while we're waiting. We need about 10. Oh, these are assembling machine 2s, that's why. Okay, so we don't have those yet, so we'll just do assembling machine 1s. And we'll just put them down ourselves. Alternatively, you could use the downgrade planner, but for me, it's going to be quicker just to do this. Um, okay, and it looks like those are fast inserters. So we may need to put our own inserters too. Um, so what we can do here, this is a cool little trick I'll show you in a minute here. Um, well, actually, can we make fast inserters yet? No, we cannot. You know what we need to do is, okay, sorry for the speed there, but I want to come back up here real quick. And we need to put all our science in here. And we are going to go here, and I'm not going to worry about that. What I do want is... If I do electronics, then I can do, yeah, I can do fast inserters next. Okay, cool. And we we just watch the uh, science go for a little bit. And in the meantime, we can make some more science stuff. And we can insert that. Um, so that will get us the fast inserters, which will work better for this. Uh, the other option here, and I might as well show this to you guys because it's really good, really useful, and I wish I had known it earlier. Okay, Alt-U is Upgrade Planner, or you can click it down here. It's down here somewhere. Control, paste, uh, where's Upgrade Planner? There it is, Alt-U. You can actually place the Upgrade Planner in your inventory. Then you right-click the Upgrade Planner, and this is going to be a custom one. And you can actually upgrade or downgrade things like this. So you have a from and to option. So we want to go from fast inserter to regular inserter. We press E or whatever to get out of there. Now this is actually like a physical item in our inventory. 
and it what it will do is it will change in any blueprints or it'll mark any placed ones down to change from the fast inserters the blue inserters to the yellow inserters so we'll, we will do that for this here and you can see I can just hover over it like a deconstruction planner or a copy paste thing and it's going to change all the things that are marked there in red because those are the only things that are in that upgrade planner it's going to mark them to now be regular inserters and fast inserters are a little bit better and we'll probably change them back to fast inserters soon but for the time being we don't quite have them researched we got we'll have them in a few seconds here but I just kind of wanted to show you guys how this would work uh, it looks like we could use another splitter. Remember, I was talking about making those earlier. So if we expand this and cancel all our science, then we can do a few splitters, and then we can do a few more science things. All right. That thing is practically finished, but we do need some copper up here. So let's start with just one lane of copper. Uh, we can mine this little guy here. Or if we, if we mark it with deconstruction, yeah, the nanobot gets it nice. So maybe they do work for trees, actually. Okay. Whoops. Sorry for the speed there. Um, now I'm gonna put this down to just to show you guys what I what I want to here. I'm gonna bring this lane down, and um, now we want some copper, right? We can just pull off of the first lane, and again, since it's circuits, we're gonna do a full lane, and then we would put a splitter right there, but we don't quite have one yet. Now we're gonna put an undergroundy from here to cross, and here to cross again. Now we've got this full lane, there's our splitter. We've got this full lane of copper coming down. We've got this full lane of iron coming down. It's coming out here into our circuit assembly thing. Got that last bit finished. Now we just need to power it and we are golden. And then we will have circuits being made and we can put those on our main bus too. Power is actually looking pretty decent right now. We may need to get some more power soon. Probably save that for the next episode. But for now we have um, these power poles. Ooh, I actually don't have too many. So I'm going to have to cancel some stuff again. And we're going to make some more power poles. There we go. Make a ton of those, and then we'll go back to some science. All right. So click and hold, and that will allow it to be placed as far as it can go without breaking. And this might not be the best spot for the power poles, but it's OK for the time being. We can remove them later and switch them out for something else. All right, let's get this guy down right there. Okay, cool. Power is coming across, and we want it out here, actually. So let's run it here. And let's go down. Let's see if we can connect it perfectly. Nice, we can. Okay, this is now powered. Iron's coming in. We can get rid of that uh, ghost for the constant combinator and actually just put the copper in instead. Copper's coming in. We know that circuits are going to come out of both of these two. So we will just run these two with circuits. And right now it's going to be a real slow trickle because we don't have, we got slow inserters. We've got level one assembly machines. We don't have much iron. We don't have much copper, but it's getting us some circuits. And you'll see it's mostly on one side here of the belt because we've only got kind of the top here running right now. And this actually has to be connected. It isn't connected via power. So we got to put one more power pole. We can just slap it right there. That'll work. Uh, and then we would need to run iron and copper here. And uh, why don't we do that real quick? So we're going to run iron to this one. We know this is going to be iron, so we can get rid of the combinator. Let's go all the way here. Now, remember what I was saying about like wanting the different lanes of iron now? So we're going to do a couple undergroundies here so we can make room. Then we'll deconstruct that. And we're going to get this third lane. Because you'll see the in the beginning, we pulled the first, the rightmost lane off completely. And we balanced it with the second lane, right? So now the second lane is basically whatever's coming down the second lane is all that's going to be in these two from here on out. Which is why you want to consider having dedicated lines for your circuits. Because you're going to use a lot of iron and a lot of copper for your circuits. Especially once your base gets bigger and bigger. But either way, we'll get to that eventually. For the time being, I just want to show you this concept. And that is, we're going to pull the third lane here now because that one hasn't been touched yet. We're going to pull that one out completely, right? And then what we could do here is we could um, we could put another splitter right there just to balance that one out right there, right? And then we got those right there. Um, and we got a full lane of copper, or excuse me, iron coming out again. Now, 
even more ideally every time you pull stuff off you put a full one of these balancers but you don't always have room for that or want to use the resources but every once in a while you do want to put another balancer on the other 4x4 balancer or however many lanes wide your bus gets once you get you know better belts and you can make longer undergroundies and that'll just ensure essentially that you've got a nice even flow with whatever's left now do keep in mind again this is a full lane here so like the four lanes that you start with only like two of what's coming down from those lanes is going to continue down here um down the bus uh and if you if you see things like oh this one isn't using all the copper and this lane is getting way backed up you can do things like add another splitter in beforehand and that'll bring only you know some of it out or if it gets full it'll send everything down to the second lane so that's a good tactic or again, alternatively, you can use the splitter here and have these two coming down and just have half the lane come out. But for the time being, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, cool, looking good. Uh, so I think that's a nice little start here, but let's finish our copper that we were gonna pull off here. Yeah, let's get some copper there. Oh no, I'm out of belts. Okay, that's okay. We got this little mini factory set up here for this very reason. We're going to get some more nanobots. We're going to get some more belts. All right. And then we can bring our copper down. Let the nanobots fill, finish filling that in there real quick. Okay. Let's bring this over here. And we will go ahead and bring that copper. And oops, no, that's not what I want. Sorry, <laughs> got a little distracted there. Okay, remember what I was saying about, you know, we pulled that first lane off and then we got the second one to balance it. And so we're gonna use the third, um, same concept here. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these guys. And we're gonna use this third lane. And then we'll bring this one down and then we'll balance it like that. And then we could do the same thing here. Um, put another uh, four by four balancer. Just to balance everything out, make sure that it's all good at the end there, once we're done. Okay guys, it's looking good. We got our nice little circuit assembling area set up nicely. We got our main bus started. And again, this is gonna get bigger and bigger and it's gonna look different as we expand, but this is like the basics of it. You want like one lane of um, copper or one, yeah, I guess lane, whatever you call it, I forgot. And then one of um, iron as well. I know I was hovering over the iron when I said copper, but you get my point. One of copper over here, one of iron over here. And generally you're gonna put like iron at the beginning, um, you know, the furthest up, cause it's the one you use the most, and then copper and then green circuits and so on and so forth. But there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's a lot of different ways to do buses. You can have even more space in between. You can have a big one with train unloading and then lots of space in between to make room for you know all the train unloading and just all kinds of different ways to do it. But this is kind of the uh, basic way to do it and this is kind of how I do it. So I think that is pretty much it for today, guys. Um, let's go ahead and call it a video. All right, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way till the end here, I really appreciate it, you were awesome. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Haven't had as much time lately because I've been really busy uh, to do videos, but I will be doing some more factorial videos, at least I hope so, as time progresses. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and uh, have a good night.